many of us as educators are familiar with that simple view of reading, which shows how important reading is and that it's a product of decoding and listening comprehension. There has been a lot of new research and a lot of new information since then. And so the science of reading has evolved and will continue to evolve and progress. So recently, Dr. Nell Duke and Dr. Kelly Cartwright introduced an active view of reading model. And one of the key features of this active view, view of reading model is that it shows how word recognition and language comprehension, or sometimes called listening comprehension, overlap rather than work in isolation. And important processes bridge the two of these components. And so if we look inside that circle of language comprehension, we see that it includes cultural and content knowledge, background knowledge, verbal reasoning, language structures, theory of mind, which means understanding one owns or others mental state, such as like their thoughts and feelings. And these are all components that actually can vary culturally and linguistically. So it's very important to understand not only the processes, but also individual children and multilingual learners. Like we said, they're not, they're not monolithic. So they're gonna come to us with such varied background experiences, varied content knowledge, varied vocabulary. And when we read, when we read, we are listening to ourselves. And that's, that's such an important thing to recognize. If you stop to read something, you are actually listening to yourself, but you're doing it silently. When we, all of us, when we started learning to read, we were taught to read aloud but eventually we began to read silently. And if I'm looking at my paper right now next to me, and when I read it, I'm silently reading and I'm listening to myself. And that listening comprehension is important, but if I don't know the vocabulary and the words that I'm reading, then I'm not gonna comprehend the text or what I'm listening to in my mind. So that's an important component that we have to keep at the forefront when we're working with multilingual learners. Oh, we're not hearing you, Monica. I'm sorry, I have a, I have a cough, so I mute and then I forgot to unmute. So uh, I wanna share that something I learned from Dr. Jeff Swears from Stanford, who we, uh, he and I did a webinar recently, was that when uh, that when listening to something being read or a podcast, it also it, it helps because you're not having to decode and get tripped up. There's a lot of processing that goes on neurologically to read. Your eyes are translating the words on the page, and your your cortex is figuring out what the words say, and then you're making images in your mind and you're trying to understand them. Whereas when you're listening to something, you, um, it's a much more fluid process that happens more automatically and you, you make a movie in your mind. So in a way, you're also building your own background knowledge or you're drawing on that to make images and um, pictures of what you hear. And, and often when you're, if you're faced with a difficult text or a, a story that might be difficult for somebody to read because they're not of that level yet, but they listen to it, uh, it breaks down one of those barriers to um to comprehension 